Here's seven Final Cut Pro tools I regret not exploring sooner. Ugh. I'll share how to zoom in and out with no keyframes, and then I'll show how to animate pictures with one-click effects. Stay till the end to see how I made this cool parallax effect. Let's animate! All right, one of the fastest and easiest ways to animate is to use the built-in Ken Burns effect. So I have a picture here in my timeline and I can activate Ken Burns by clicking here in the bottom left corner of the viewer and selecting crop, or I can right click on it and select crop, or even faster, I can press shift C and it brings up the crop tools. I'll select Ken Burns and you'll see two frames, a red rectangle and a green rectangle. So Ken Burns effect will move from the start or green rectangle to the red and rectangle over the duration of the clip. So let's take a preview. I'll click this button up here and let's preview it. That's pretty good, right? I mean, it was just a couple clicks and I have an animated picture. I can customize it by moving the start and end spots. I can also make the start spot the same width as the end. Let's turn off snapping by pressing N and let's see if I can do that better. See how it keeps snapping into place? I don't like that. All right, that's a little bit better. And let's just move that up and this down a little bit. Before we preview it, let's make this a little bit shorter. I'll select my image and I'll press Control D to change the length and let's go for three seconds. Three, zero, zero, enter. Now let's preview it. Oh man, I wonder if that belly flop hurt. Okay, you can also do some complex animations with Ken Burns. I have a picture here of myself being a total wimp, scared. I'll select it and make sure crop is enabled and then select Ken Burns. Let's zoom into the spider. So I'll select my end frame and I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. There we go, right around the spider. And then I'm just going to adjust my start frame up a little bit. There we go, let's preview it. So it zooms in on the spider as the video or the picture plays the entire duration of the clip. Let's zoom in and then zoom out. I'll put my playhead to the middle of my picture and press Command B. That will split it into two clips. I'll select the second one. I'll push this reverse button here and it will swap the start and end points. So now my picture will zoom in to the spider and then zoom back out. Select the second clip and go put the playhead at the very beginning and then press option F to add a freeze frame. I'm gonna press Z and click and drag to zoom in. There we go. Select the freeze frame, press control D and enter a new time. Let's go two seconds, two zero zero, enter. Shift Z to zoom out. Now it zooms in to the spider and it's gonna hold there for a couple seconds and then zoom back out. On this zoom out, let's try something different. Instead of zooming out, let's pan. So I'll select this and I'll press Shift C to bring up crop. And I want it to go from the spider to my face. So I'm gonna make the end frame smaller and then I'm just gonna reposition the end frame. And then I'll press done up here in the right corner. This is really flexible because the Ken Burns effect happens during the entire duration of the clip. I can shorten the clip and the animation adjusts to fit it. So I wanna zoom in faster. And then I wanna pan a little bit quicker to my face. So I'll just trim these two clips and I don't wanna hold as long. So I'll press Control D and let's make it one second. All right, let's check it out. So it zooms in on the spider, it holds, and then it goes up to my face. So one thing you guys don't understand is that is in a poisonous spider, it has killed hundreds of men. And so I was, I was right to be afraid. <laughs> All right, so the Ken Burns tool is awesome. It's really flexible. We can do some custom animations with it. Love it. All right, another thing we can do is add some effects to animate our pictures. Click on the effects browser over here on the right-hand side and go down to comic looks. I'm gonna add comic cool to my zoom in and out. I made a compound clip of that. Let's go to the beginning of the clip and open up the inspector by clicking on this button. And let's set a keyframe and then set mix to zero. And let's move in 20 frames. I'll go I'll hold down shift and click right arrow twice. And then let's move mix up to 100%. And I like this black and white look. And I just wanna, I'm gonna tweak this a little bit with some of these settings. Let's see how that animates. As it zooms in, it looks like a comic book. Nice. So you can use effects to add some animation. Let's try a different one. All right, now go to stylize and find handheld. And I'm gonna drag and drop that onto my image. This image, I need to zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna select it. And in the video inspector, I'm gonna change type to fill. All right, that looks pretty good. And if we play that back, it has some movement in it, some animation. It's almost as if somebody's holding a camera. If we look at the effects up here, we can change how shaky it is and how much distance it travels. So we can make it probably more like this if you're on a boat, right? Getting all sorts of seasick. I went on a boat tour in Hawaii and I was sick the entire time. 
I cannot do quotes anymore. I just lose it. I hope you're enjoying this video and I hope you're learning how to animate photos and pictures in Final Cut Pro. If you like this video, will you please give it a thumbs up so other people will see it? I really appreciate it. Coming up in just a second, I'm gonna show you how to make that cool parallax effect. But first I wanna show you how you can animate pictures in and out with one click effect. Go to the transitions browser, click this little button here and go down to stylized and then scroll down to this section called photo albums. Drag and drop one of those in between a clip. We'll go right here and let's play it back. This is really cool because you can quickly make a photo album style video out of pictures. If we select the transition, we'll see these little pins on either side. These pins indicate what image is going to show up in these drop zones. So we're transitioning from this picture to this picture. So let's move these pins to include a different picture. Let's do that one and this one. We can also change the duration of this and make it longer or shorter by clicking and dragging on the handles. All right, let's see how that looks. I love that transition. Now go to movements and then scroll down until you find this spin transition. Drag and drop that between two clips and play it back. That's pretty cool, but it moves kind of slowly. I'm gonna shorten the transition. And if I select the transition, I have this cool on-screen control. I can move from where this thing starts to spin and move into place, and I can move how it rotates. Let's try that. Let's check that out. Ah, I love that transition. It's a cool looking effect and you can use it to animate on or animate pictures off. All right, now let's make that parallax effect. I have this image here and the first thing to do is to duplicate it. Hold down option, click and drag up to make a copy and then press V to turn off that top copy. If you have a vertical picture like this, select it and go to the inspector and change to fill. Then change scale to 50%. Now press option G and to turn it into a compound clip, name it and press enter or okay. Go to effects by clicking on this button and scroll to the bottom to the tiling section and add Collida Tile to your compound clip. In the inspector, set width to 960 and change height to 1080. And what this does is it repeats the image on the side so that we don't have any black bars or black sections. There's a little bit of a seam right here, so I'm gonna change this to 958, just a little bit less, and that will take out the seam. There we go. Let's activate the top and deactivate the bottom, and let's mask out this guy. So go to effects and add draw mask, and then zoom in so you can get a good mask. And I'm just going to click and add these little control points all around my guy. I am actually don't need to be very accurate with this because of the white clouds around him. I'm going to use a special masking technique to replace him and so I can be kind of loose with this. But if you don't have that freedom, you want to take the time and add all the correct points and get as close as possible to your subject. Now that that's done, in the inspector let's add a little bit of feathering inwards. Not a lot. We'll go for 15. Now I want to select this clip and copy it with Command C and let's enable the bottom clip and double click on the compound clip to go into the picture, select it, press Command Shift V and make sure you're just pasting the draw mask and then let's invert it. So now we have a hole where he's going to be. Duplicate this clip, hold down Option, click and drag below it and then in the inspector, delete the draw mask from this new layer and let's move it over. In the viewer, right click, select transform and then just drag and drop that over so that our guy disappears. I can see a little bit here on the mask. So I'll select the top clip and I'm gonna take that feather at zero. There we go. I'll click on the viewer and select done and press shift Z and then I'll go out of the compound clip. Now with the bottom clip selected, let's go to the beginning of the clip and set the scale to 200%. So we're zoomed back in and set a keyframe. Then go to the end of the clip. Make sure you have this film strip icon on the right side and let's change the scale down to 190. And then select the top clip Go to the very beginning and for scale set a keyframe and let's make him a little bit bigger. Let's go to 200%. There we go. And now let's go to the end and we'll go back one frame. Make sure we have the end of the clip with this film strip and let's make him even a little bit bigger. 230 looks good. And let's set a keyframe for rotation and then click on this arrow to go back to the first keyframe and let's rotate him a little bit. All right, let's take a look. Oh, that looks so cool. Looks like he's flipping through the air and we're kind of moving away from him at the same time and he's getting closer. I love the parallax effect. So there's several different ways you can animate pictures in Final Cut Pro. Once you've animated your picture, you may want to add some cool motion graphics to it. Don't worry, I got your back. I put together a pack of transitions, effects, and titles, and it's called the All-Star Pack. Check out this cool title we can do. I'll just drag and drop it to my timeline and I can quickly trim it. And then I can customize the location of it. I can change the size as well, and I can change the text quickly. 
And just like that, we have a really cool animation you can use to promote your social media accounts. It comes with over 90 different templates and it's worth $138, but I wanna give it to you for free. All you have to do is click the link in the description below.